Welcome to the Game Scoop, where we bring you the latest in gaming news. I'm Ian. And I'm Hideki. And I'm Ashton. Uh, and today we will be talking about VR. We'll start with VR today. Um, I'll hand that over to Ashton to start us off on that. So, in the VR community, it's been like the VR tech has been progressing a lot over the past decade. Um, especially like now, you can buy Oculus Quest for two, three, four hundred dollars, depending on which model and which spec you get. And it's really cool to see like where that's going, and it's going to be really exciting to see what um, develops in the near future. Yeah, it's pretty insane because it was all the way back in like 2013 when the first Oculus prototype was getting sent out to people and now now it's not it's not even that long it's not even 10 years later I mean it's almost 10 years but it's it's not even 10 years later and we already have a standalone wireless VR headset that can play almost any VR game just without any wires or base stations you need to set up it's kind of crazy how just how fast everything developed regarding VR and how fast it's going to develop and the and that's not including the fact that um, prices prices have changed on those two a lot because um, before I mean before um, things even considering all things for what you're getting um, you were paying you were paying a lot of money to get those uh, products for VR um, but now it's to the point where getting those products are what. Uh, 300 400 bucks it's a lot more affordable than it used to be yeah really good for the consumer especially lots more people can get their hands on a VR headset that they can use for all the games that they would want yeah exactly and it can help businesses too with depending on what the business wants to do you can I have been to places where they've had like te they've had demos set up just like on oculus quests uh, that you can just use and that's possible now because it's affordable um, and there's a lot more games like coming out for VR too like like more more games that are focused on VR and just aren't ports of other games. Like recently, there was a there was an MMO uh, fantasy VR game that just released recently. Um, I think on the Quest, and that's like been or is also on Steam. It's like one of the most top selling games on Steam, and it was a VR game. It was an MMO, which is it's crazy to see um, that we're getting closer and closer to a world where you can just kind of escape into VR and play games. Speaking of fantasy games. Um, Elden Ring came out recently, a uh, game that everyone's been looking forward to for years at this point. I was personally really looking forward to it. I've been playing it a lot. It's really fun, but there's a there's a big but that comes with that, and that's the fact that From Software has done it again and screwed up the optimization on PC especially. Um, it's stuttering like a lot. <laughs> um, no matter what system you have, no matter the graphics card, whatever, it will stutter, and it's not good. Like, like Ashton, you have a you have a pretty beefy system, right? Mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, I've seen like I don't personally own Elden Ring, but I have seen videos like of people having e like even beefier systems than I have, like in terms of graphics power, and it's still like. People have been talking about it, like it's still stuttering on those systems, like a like an eight thousand dollar system. It still stutters on, which is insane. So it's, there's not much you can really do about it, except well, I guess wait until the, yeah, just uh, wait patch for pushes it. Yeah. out. That's all you can really do. And even on consoles, like it runs, it runs better on consoles for sure. But it's also having issues. Like I'm pretty sure the PS5 version, especially, it runs worse than if you just played the PS4 version on the PS5 because like. It just doesn't have as much frame rate. It doesn't perform nearly as well, which is, it's honestly kind of insane to think about, because <laughs> this is this is a game. It's not a Cyberpunk 2077 situation where the game is just completely broken on release. But this is a game where you'd expect it to. You'd really want this to run well, because it's a game you're going to be dumping so many hours into. It's 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 important for it to run well. So we just have to hope that. From software can put out patches fast enough to fix all the issues uh, and the issues do vary it can vary from like being not good to you know so one thing that um, I've seen is like I, that I actually wonder is like um, how is this game going to do it well now that now that it's already come out and things that keep happening having all these problems uh, must be really bad 
for the game and for the company because um yeah they've been, probably been getting a lot of bad reviews which... yeah it was it, it was getting review bombed a little bit on steam uh due to the performance issues but from software has had a bit of a track record of not having very good pc ports especially on launch like i, I heard a, someone on discord i was talking to was talking about how when sekiro came out um they just were stuck in a black screen like 50 percent of the time playing the game was them trying to was just them hoping it wouldn't boot up to a black screen and dark souls 1 had a notoriously awful pc launch so it's not really anything new for from software but the fact that it's kind of being it's kind of an issue across all the systems elden ring is on is a little concerning um even consoles which is it's just how it is but all we can do is wait and hope for a patch um, but speaking of consoles, um, there was some console shortages with the Switch um, that Hideki wanted to talk about. Uh, yeah, so um, in terms of consoles, uh, one, one console, uh, the Nintendo Switch that came out 2017, um, it was a, it totally changed the uh, world of gaming in general because um, it was the first console that can be handheld as well as um, played as a console that is widely known and, and then on a side note we can especially today we can totally see the impact of that with the Steam Deck that recently just came out which is basically just a handheld PC that you can play games on it's very similar to the Switch so it's really cool to see how the Switch kind of inspired something like that anyway you were saying oh yeah so um, yeah because of because it came out when it first came out obviously it had some demand for it it had a few games, but it wasn't. It didn't have. It didn't have what it has today. But it still. It still was was in a higher demand. But um, after a few months, after f uh, some time, it started to decrease in prices in comparison, and decrease in general uh, in comparison to a lot of consoles. But as soon as but as soon as COVID hit, um, the prices started shooting up very high and. That was that was good good for Nintendo, but um, pretty bad for the market. And people people started selling their consoles at their consoles that were used at the price that was um, new and that you could get for new because it was so um, high of pricing and. Uh, there were a lot of there were a lot of other concerns. What do you think about this, Ashley? So yeah, um, like so back during COVID, I saw a lot of the like there was a big I guess gap. Like you couldn't really find them new, or if you did find them new, they were really high in price. You couldn't get them from like a retailer because they were out of stock almost instantly when they had put more inventory into their uh, website or had gotten more inventory for consumer store. So a lot of the switches that you would see were like just crazy high prices that nobody really wanted to pay. I mean, people of course bought them because they wanted a switch, especially during COVID times, right? To play their games, but it just was not a good uh, time for consumers guess, to buy a switch. Yeah, and it's it, the issue has gotten a little less like it's it's gotten it's gotten better as time has gone on and like COVID's kind of going on. But but the when the Switch OLED came out, that kind of changed things a lot. It made switches a little bit easier to get, like normal ones and switch lights. Switch lights have always been a little bit harder to get though. But switch the when the Switch OLED came out, now the Switch OLED is like hard to get. Like that's that's gonna be something that you're gonna be finding out of stock in a lot of places. So it's just how it is in the market right now. Um, hopefully it'll get better soon, but we'll see. So I think that about wraps it up for today's Game Scoop. Um, hope you guys all enjoyed, and we'll see you on the next one.